Rovers return to League One action as they make the short trip to Gig Lane. We'll talk about the Berry Rovers game and more on today's show. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. It's been about two weeks since I last spoke to you. A lot has gone on behind the scenes, so I have had a haircut. Uh, Rovers have been in some action, but they have not played in the league since way back when. Halloween fixture against Fleetwood Town. So we'll play catch up in just a second. But before we get into it, if you haven't done it so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers moving forward. I know you, you might have seen some other content coming through on my channel, but fear not, Rovers will always be my number one. That's what I love. You love doing these videos and uh, I love catching up with all the other Rovers fans. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Now, before we get stuck into the very fixture, let's play a little bit of a catch up, talk about what's been going on as well because obviously I haven't done any previews or reviews for any cup games because they're not screened I can't really give you an honest opinion um, and it also gives me a bit of time to play catch up you know with the wife and everything because uh, watching Rovers stateside is uh, takes up a little bit of my time um, in the mornings it's actually quite prime time so it takes up a, a good chunk of my day so it was good to be able to spend some quality time with the missus so let's take a look at the FA Cup. Blackburn Rovers were drawn against Barnet in the first round of the FA Cup. And it started to be a little bit of a tricky tie. Barnet taking the lead on the 31st minute before Blackburn Rovers pulled their socks up and got stuck into them. In the end, resulting in a 3-1 victory. Goals from the man Nuttall, uh, Danny Graham and Marcus Anderson. So good to see all three of those players getting on the score sheet. So 3-1 victory into the hat for the second round. And who do we get out there? Crew Alexandra. I, know, I think it's another home tie, so that's a, that's a positive one. I think Rovers can get a result there, and then we'll uh, hopefully make it into the third round where we could get a, now, a nice mouth-watering tie against either a Premier League team or maybe even another local derby, maybe to rectify a wrong that happened earlier in the season. Next up was the Checker Trade Cup when we took on Rochdale at their own place, result ending in 1-1. However, we did stumble out on penalties. But to be honest with you, I don't really care about the competition. It's kind of a waster. And to be honest with you, we have a lot of fixtures in the season, 46 in the league, let alone. And with all these international call-ups and things like that stalling our progress, it kind of makes it a little bit uh, uh, better for us not to be in the tournament. It's so the same goes. You can say the same thing with the League Cup and maybe even to a point the FA Cup. So Joe Nuttall's on the score sheet once again, and that makes it three goals in his last three appearances for him. Clearly pushing for a first-team start. Maybe he can get his nose in front uh, for the league positions, maybe even against Berry. Now moving forward, it's back to League One action for Rovers as they take on Berry in another Northwest Derby. It's a short trip to Gig Lane. So let's take a closer look at that fixture. Match taking place Saturday, 18th of November. Last season, Berry finished 19th. Uh, in League One so far, rock bottom of the league. That's an interesting statistic, to be honest with you. Uh, we do tend to struggle against teams that are uh, in dire straits, so this could be another one of those banana skins that hopefully we can avoid. Top scorer Jermaine Beckford didn't didn't feature last time out for Berry, so I'm not sure where his uh, uh, current first team status is. Maybe he's suspended, injured, not too sure. And their manager currently, Ryan Lowe. Lee Clark was dismissed or left the role uh, not too long ago. Uh, I'm not sure if Ryan Lowe's there on a permanent basis or not, but he's the man pulling the strings at the moment. That also might change um, towards kickoff on Saturday. Over the years, Rovers have met Berry 81 times in all competitions at all grounds. Rovers currently top of the two sides, 34 wins, 32 losses, and 15 draws. Over the years, Blackburn Rovers winning the last five. Uh, last time these two sides met was all the way back in 1980, when Blackburn Rovers came out 2-1 winners in the old Division Three. So looks like Barrow will have to raise their game Saturday to break this hoodoo, and also to get themselves out of this bottom spot, which they currently find themselves in. So let's take a look at the starting 11s for both Blackburn and Berry. We'll kick it off with Berry. Uh, Fansan will be in goal. Williams, Edwards, O'Connell and Aldred in the back line. Lee, Ince, O'Shea and Dance across midfield. Up front, a Jose and Smith. Let's take a look at the statistics. Beckford currently tops the scoring charts with eight goals. Like I said earlier, I'm not sure where his uh, whereabouts are currently lie in the first team if he's suspended or injured or falling out first team plans but either way um, he didn't play the last game 
Uh, moving forward, Maguire with two goals, Josie with two goals, and then Smith with two goals. Into the discipline, most yellows. Aldridge on four, Williams on four, Inces three, Beckford has two. And also into the reds now, two guys on red cards, or have had experienced red cards in the season. Murphy and O'Connell both have a red to the name. Let's have a look at the form books now going into this game. Berry looking back over the past five fixtures, yet to win in the last five. I don't know how far that run goes back, but they did actually pick up a win in the Checker Trade Cup against Stoke under 21s. That was on November the 8th, 3 1 winners. Uh, they drew against Woking, and that's, this is actually a, a bit of critical information. They do play Woking midweek. Um, this, this video will probably be live Tuesday, so they'll be playing, I think they'll be playing Woking Tuesday night. Depending on the first team or the team that's selected for Berry, they may have some players. Um, rested or uh but anyways it's an extra fixture for them to worry about rovers again on the other side have not played really first team football in a good two weeks so they could be a little bit rusty i'm hoping mowbray's kept them fit in the process let's take a look at rovers anyway this is how i feel that they'll start against Barry right Ryer in goal nayimbi downing mulgrew williams should be the back four i'm hoping there's no uh surprise appearances of, of ward or caddis is okay but i feel nayimbi's kind of returned uh, to the right back, and he's kind of made that his own. Moving into the midfield, Conway, Whittingham, Smallwood, and Dak. Um, not sure if Bennett's back from his suspension or not. I know he uh, missed the the Barnet game, so he may be back. In that case, I might swap it around a little bit. Maybe I will push Dak up front with uh, Nuttall and maybe drop Antonson, but I don't know. Again, up front, Antonson and Joe Nuttall gets the start for me. Three goals in three games. The man is on fire. He has to play. And I'm hoping he can continue his run because we do need... I think that's an area we are lacking. Uh, let's take a look, actually, at the statistics here. This is what I'm going to uh, mention. Is Look at Barry. they got an eight-goal goal scorer in uh, Jermaine Beckford. Other sides that have been struggling, Oldham... They've had they've got two players way back when with six goals to their name, um, so a lot of teams have that in their sides. You know, I'm sure the the top teams, Shrewsbury, Wigan, Charlton, and the like, they've probably got a good goal scorer amongst. When you look at our statistics, we've got Dominic Samuel, no disrespect to him, on five goals, and we've got you know Danny Graham on our books, Marcus Anderson from Leeds on our books, um, and they're all struggling as well to find the back of the net. Um, hopefully, Joe Nuttall will come in and uh, and, and get his chance because he's been on fire. Look at look at the stats there: four goals to his name this season, and that's that's in the appearances that he's made. Uh, two of them, I think, in the Czech Trade Cup, one in the league, and also one in the FA Cup. No brainer, has to start. The man's on fire. Moving into discipline, Elliot Bennett's got five yellows. Corey has got five yellows. Small has got five. Williams has got three. Elliot Bennett. Uh, got a red, Simon got a red, and Scott Wharton also did get a red in that Checker Trade Cup against Rochdale. So those yellows, I believe Smallwood is probably past his ban. I think the FA Cup was that game that he missed, and it probably applies to um, Evans as well, uh, but I'm not too sure. Let's take a look at the form book now. Blackburn Rovers going into this game, won two of the past five games, losing one, I guess you could say. We lost the Checker Trade Cup on penalties. Uh, it's a bit of a bit of a weird one that anyway I can't really class this as a, I can't really class that as a defeat. But critically, the last two league games were were draws, home to Fleetwood, an important away uh, point against Wigan. To be honest with you, I think we were down to ten men for a good chunk of that game, so uh, that was a critical point. So hopefully we can get back to winning ways and 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 put some more pressure on those playoff spots. We are currently seventh. We do have two games in hand on uh, a good portion of the playoff teams above us. But it doesn't really matter. Points on the board is what really matters. So hopefully, when those fixtures come around, we can we can, we can can make up for lost ground. So what's been happening on social media? What are the fans saying, what the players saying, that kind of stuff? Uh, it's still early days as of recording. This is Monday, so a good few days before kickoff. But there is some a little bit of, little bit of uh, banter out there. Let's take a look at this. Blackburn Rovers posted this on their Twitter page. Rovers are back in action this time next week as they teased the, the Berry match. Ivo Hodgkinson, who's, who's also known as at Crazy for Rovers, says, I'll be there putting the Raw back into Rovers. So he's excited. I'm excited. I'm hopefully you guys are excited. Meanwhile, Alex Copeland says on the Rovers Facebook page, it's back to business this weekend, guys and girls. Been climbing the walls for two weeks. We're selling Gig Lane out or what, my Rovers family? 
So he's trying to cheer on the boys and make sure it's a sellout, especially in the way end. Meanwhile, Ian Mayer says in the League One Banter Group, haha, Barry gonna walk this league. Oh dear, look where you are. And says on the same thread as, as Ian James Mead says, looks like Barry are pissing the league, just as they said in July. And there's a little snapshot there of where they currently lie in the table. And it's true, there was a lot of banter early doors, uh, but Blackburn Rovers are also guilty of that. We said we're gonna walk this league and we currently lie seventh. Um, but yeah, Barry also giving it giving it the big one early doors. Meanwhile, Bernard Walsh said after the Barry Gillingham game on the weekend, unfortunate is not really a suitable word at Barry Official. Continue to leak late goals week after week after week. The players are clearly lacking in both physical, fitness, and mental strength. Meanwhile, also after the same game, bottom of the league, FFS. We're supposed to be pushing for playoffs. Utter tripe. I've obviously swapped some words out there. Um, John Blackley also said, we have just gone bottom of the league. Stuart Day, you need to sort the managerial position out pronto. Season is over. Just a matter of if we can drag ourselves out of the bottom four. The players should be ashamed to be bottom, but I'm not sure they will be. So it seems like morale is destroyed at Gig Lane, but I'm hoping it can just say a little bit destroyed for a little bit longer um, until maybe Sunday. Uh, maybe we could take advantage of this because to be honest with you like I said earlier we do we as in Rovers we do tend to struggle against teams that are struggling um, they seem to save themselves a little bit or they find that extra bit of uh, something uh, to either restrain Rovers or or just take the sting out of it Rovers need to step up their game in all fairness um, we should be going into this and we should be expecting a win I'm hoping for a win um, I'm hoping for a comfortable win. We, we have the, the midfield to dominate this game. I just hope the strikers have got their shooting boots on and managed to put the ball in the back of the net because that's something that we've clearly lacked. And it's an area I think, I know people go on about the defence and I go on about the defence as well. The defence is still vulnerable for Rovers. As for the attack, we've kind of, kind of just uh, faked it really. We've got some strikers on our books, Danny Graham. Oh, being paid handsomely, I imagine. Uh, whereas, and he's not finding the back of the net. Joe Nuttall on a one-year deal, and I'm sure he's not getting paid that much. It's something that, that needs to maybe be rectified. Um, but I think they need competition up there, maybe find a, a loanee, another, another loanee, or um, maybe we can get some, some more money from the from the Venkies, but pff, fat chance of that happening. Over the years, a number of players have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Berry. Here are just a few. Oh, the lovely Chris Brown. I'm not sure how many goals he scored. I'm sure it was, was plenty. But he played for Blackburn Rovers and he also played for Berry. I'm not sure where he currently lies in the football world. He might still be on Berry's books. I'm not too sure. But he did play for Blackburn Rovers. Also, Antoine Forrester. Again, a guy that was on the youth books, I think. Uh, Blackburn Rovers didn't really get a full crack of the whip. He, he might have played a couple times. Uh, a couple substitute appearances in his time at Ewood Park, but he also played for Berry. And I do remember him scoring a few goals for Berry. And this one, yep, midfield dynamo, Elliot Bennett once wore the Berry jersey, but now wears the blue and white of Blackburn Rovers. Quality player on the field, an amazing character off the field. True gentleman, and I'm glad that he is at Ewood Park. And he recently penned a new deal to keep him at the club. Um, for a, a few more years. Like I said, that was just a few players who played for Blackburn Rovers and Berry over the years. I'm gonna bring a few more back for the second leg at Ewood Park. But if you wanna check out the full list, head over to my WordPress site, details in the description below, um, so you'll already get ahead of everyone else and, and know the, the full drill. It's not what I think is gonna happen this weekend, it's what Cast the Cat thinks will happen this weekend. Let's take a look at what she thinks will happen between Berry and Blackburn Rovers. <laughs> I've got for you today folks but before I go make sure you hit the subscribe button keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers now in the past two weeks I have been busy doing a lot of other t different types of videos I just want to say something that I'm done with the FIFA for the time being I've been doing the FIFA 95 hacked uh, for the past few weeks 
Um, however, because I'm doing them live and I'm doing them in my truck in the middle of central Pennsylvania, this time of year in central Pennsylvania, it gets cold. My truck has no heat. So that's been kiboshed. I was hoping to smash through the whole fixture list in a short space of time, but due to availability and that kind of stuff, the, my, my buddies couldn't really commit to it anymore. So that's gone. But in the place of it, I've started up FM18 doing those uh, kind of videos. So feel free to check those out. I stream live on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So feel free to check me out. But I also throw in a summary of any Twitch play I do on Saturdays. So you can feel free to check that bad boy out. At the minute, not doing rovers. Uh, I'm going to be doing that possibly in the new year. I've got a cracking storyline for that one. So feel free to check that out later on. So over the next few weeks, the countdown and the build-up to the World Cup continues. I'll be doing a lot of World Cup content. Uh, some stuff is already out there, but uh, expect to see that pick up the pace over the next few weeks and into the new year. But once again, don't worry. Rovers will always be my number one, and that's going to take priority over everything. It's just something else that I'm into and I enjoy and I'm sure we all will when the summer comes around. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, so feel free to check me out right there. I want to give a big shout out to these guys at the BRFCS Forum. Uh, a lot of support over the past few weeks. Uh, and long may that continue. Um, if you haven't checked out the Blackburn Rovers Forum, please head over there. Check it out. It's where friends can chat amongst each other, talk about the starting lineup, talk about the results and talk about anything Rovers related, amongst other things. So feel free to check them bad boys out. But anyway, looking forward to this one. I have been going nuts, waiting for the next Blackburn Rovers game. It's been good to take a breather. However, on the flip side, a lot of teams are putting points on the board, and that's, not, and that's something we're not doing, and it's something that's kind of frustrating. It does kill the momentum. Um, I don't know if the break is a good thing overall for the team, um, last time in the last fixture in the league was the 2-2, frustrating 2-2 draw against Fleetwood. Um, was, it, was it a good time to take a break or was it not? Not too sure. But I'm sure the result against Barnett was a, was a good feel-good factor for Danny Graham, Antonson and also Joe Nuttall. So hopefully the, those three strikers uh, are going to ride with the punches on this one and then uh, get, con uh, continue where they left off. But the next time you'll see me will be a wrap up of this fixture. I'll do a review uh, probably Saturday into Sunday. So stand by for that bad boy. But until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now, come on Rovers. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.